Africa in lane two, Dan Jervis, the Welshman who will also see in the four, the eight, and the fifteen. Elijah Winnington is the world champion. He's in lane four. And the lane inclusion to Robinson, who uh, a few weeks ago did the EP here and then lane two would draw from that to this film, and he's got a space on the team. He's in the four and the fifteen. Yeah, I think his uh, personal favourite is the longer distance, but again, the four hundred will be a great indicator to see where he's at. Um, I know that his coach has been saying that he's been in good form, really excited, very focused. So let's see, see how the summer's going on this. So that is, it's at 1.06, un under world record pace. That's how quick this is. This could be a very fast final, especially for a heat swim. Elijah, world champion, uh, very close to the world record. So he will have a bit more room to play around, I think, with his pacing. So he might be front-ending this, so going out a lot quicker than expected to maybe have a chance to pull back. And as you can see there from that yellow line, the world record line, he is pretty much underneath that. So we'll see whether he can remain underneath that coming into the second half of that race. It's an Aussie one two, it's Elijah Winnington, it's Sam Short in second place, and uh, they'll be pushing each other on to try and go to a very fast time. You saw that yellow line indicating the world record line. Well, he did 3.41.22 at the World Championships in Budapest just a few weeks ago, and these two are racing each other. Everybody else is racing for third and fourth, and the Maya spoils, but the two Aussies one two really have a race here. And we are still under world record pace by 0.19. That's still pretty impressive. So we're at the halfway mark. And I think he's probably going to drop off a little bit. I'm not quite sure we're going to see a world record swim this morning. Probably not going to see as well, maybe getting close to that 3.41 time. But it's going to be the fastest time. But Sam, you know, the youngest member within the, the, sort of the boys' 400 freestyle for the Australians, you know, is relatively new on the scene international competition-wise raced the 800 free at the recent world championships and the 1500 free so he does favor the longer distances so for him racing this 400 is a great opportunity he's the third uh, australian entered for the uh, 400 freestyle so yeah he came third in the aussie trials so we'll see whether he can maybe he's certainly giving elijah a little bit of run for his money now well he's got up to 344 this year 344 34 so he's going for it he might well be taking the lead with 100 to go here Oh, it's very tight. One one hundred. That's how close it is between the Winnington and Short. And then the young Malaysian who I was talking to his coach Chris Martin about earlier on. Let's hope he get down below three forty eight into a three forty seven. He's on course for that. Yeah, very much is. I think we can see now that Elijah's just taking the foot off the gas a little bit. He knows that they've got enough of a lead uh, to be comfortable one two. But I think coming down into the last twenty five, especially Elijah will be the one that will want to have the touch. But uh, we're starting to see now Daniel Jervis and Matthew States. Matthew's got quite a busy program here at the Games. This young up-and-coming South African swimmer certainly giving it a go, coming down for the final, final closing stages. Last 25 then, it's an Aussie head-to-head. -head. At the top of your picture, it's Elijah Winnington, the world champion. Sam Shaw, the third rank to the Australians. He doesn't want to be the third rank to the Australians. He wants to be the first rank to the Australians going into the final. He may well just be edged out. He is just. That's still a very, very quick time. Well, they, they eased up towards the end. 3.48, we said we'll get you in there. 3.48 is exactly what they've done. Very tight at the end. But 1-2 for Australia. And uh, just willing to have what he needed to do. And an interesting race strategy. Took it up very hard over 200. He's up in the second 200. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. That could be a potential race strategy or it could just be the excitement. You know, it's the first event, first race. A lot of uh, excited energy can be ha can happen at the front end of their swim. So some swimmers might burn out a little bit quicker from going out too hard. Um, but yeah, it, it was a strategy that obviously worked for them. They did ease off in the second half. Hopefully it's more of an ease off and they didn't... Uh, struggle with too much uh, sort of going to out too hard at the beginning but uh, yeah 348 I think should be you know relatively comfortable for getting them into that final 
So these are the ones who progressed. Dan Jervis just making it in in the final place. They did mention him in that race. It was all about the Australians, but he's got in there. As indeed as the young Malaysian we talked about, seventh place for him. Matthew Sage with that great finish in 3.49. So three Australians, uh, but the fastest qualifier into the final will be...